Hey guys, welcome back to Middle U. My name is Riley. And my name is Mish. And it's been great cheering on Liberty's football team these last few weeks. Don't forget to continue cheering them on this week when they play the Buffalo Bulls. Yeah, an open mic was a hit last night. We had some really good talent come out. Um, also, don't forget about Neon Mini Golf, okay? The Rod is throwing a fun little Dine with the Dean of Students, September 21st from noon to 1.30. And this is an extra special event because President Costin will be speaking. All right, guys, we know you've all been waiting for this one. Yep, men's hockey is having their first game September 15th at 7 p.m. And make sure you guys get there early and get a seat because we're expecting a packed house. Right here at the Osborne Stadium, women's soccer is taking on App State at 6 p.m. tomorrow. And then on Saturday at 6 p.m., we've got men's soccer playing USC Upstate. Yep, so either tune on your phones live or come to the game and support your fellow Flames. You can watch Across the Spider-Verse on the big screen at Outdoor Movie Night. Yep, so head to the Montview Lawn at 8 p.m. on Saturday. And I cannot wait till it gets colder. Oh, me too, because then we can watch something on the big screen right here in the Vine Center. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So cool. Next weekend is CFO Weekend with Torrin Wells coming to visit us at 8 p.m. in the Vine Center. Again, this is going to be on September 22nd, so mark your calendars because it's also going to be featuring Joshua Leventhal. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if you want to leave. Make sure to visit the Photo Expo from September 18th to the 23rd. And this is gonna be in the La Haye Lobby starting at noon. And also if you wanna submit a photo, make sure you do it by tonight at midnight. By tonight, you heard her. Guys, Tony Merida is having prayer forum for students. And this is gonna be September 14th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And again, guys, next week, see fall weekend. <laughs> Let's make it extra special for our guests, guys. Even though the pond will be dyed blue. And the food will be really good. And the best events will be happening. And the best guests will be coming. Okay, just kidding, but seriously though, let's make them feel super welcomed. And honestly, on a real note, I have no idea where I'm gonna park. Yeah, let's try carpooling. Let's do that, seriously. Yeah. Well, that's all that's new. Enjoy your day at LU.
You have no right to be ordinary. God has called you to be extraordinary. Can we say thank you to Shine from the School of Music here at Liberty under the direction of Stephen Mueller. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, let's pray together if we could. Father, today we're grateful for the great gift that you've given in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for the promise and the hope of salvation that comes from him and him alone. And so, God, I pray today as we gather in this place, as we always do, that we would hear from you that we would have an encounter with uh, the holy God that we know you are. That, God, you promise us that you inhabit the praises of your people. And so we thank you in advance for being here and for the work you're going to do in our lives. God, we thank you for this student body, for the impact that they make not only on this campus but around the world. We pray that you would continue to use this place full of champions for Christ who will change the world with the gospel. And, God, for that we give you the praise, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship together. Through the ages, thrown 
thrones, fallen kingdoms in. There's only one God who stands. There's only one God who stands. Over nations, over rulers and above all things. There's only one risen king. There's only one risen king. Come on, sing it out. Who is our strong foundation? The rock that won't be moved. The hope of our salvation. Nobody, nobody but you. He is the Lord Almighty. There's nothing he can't do. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Jesus, nobody but you. Yeah. In our failures, who's strong enough to heal our land? There's only one God who can. There's only one
Lord, I pray that that would be our prayer, God, that we would recognize, Father, the sacrifice of your son on the cross, Lord, and that we would not take that for granted, but God, that we would proclaim your name, that we would proclaim your truth over our lives today, Jesus. So Lord, we just, we thank you so much for the freedom that we have to just come before you today, God, and just lift up these praises to you. So Lord, we just lift up this day, Lord, help us to see you in a new way, God. Lord, we love you, we praise you. It's in your name that we pray, amen. You guys can be seated. Good morning. My name's Dr. Joel Cox, the Interim Dean of the Helm School of Government. Today, we're here to recognize Senator Steve Newman and Delegate Kathy Byron in their retiring from public service. I'm joined on the stage by Senator Newman. Delegate Byron, due to previous commitments, is unable to be here today. Senator Newman served the Commonwealth of Virginia for 35 years, including Lynchburg City Council from 1988 to 1992, the Virginia House of Delegates from 1992 to 1996, and the Virginia Senate from 1996 to 2023. These legislators have dedicated their life to public service in this great commonwealth and have served with honor. It gives me great honor to join President Costin, Chancellor Falwell, and Provost Hicks in recognizing their accomplishments. Senator Newman. And we have, uh, want to present Senator Newman with a plaque for his service to the Commonwealth of Virginia and our communities. And we just want to thank you again uh, for that service. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you for this. I'm so grateful. I really just uh, wanted to come back and say thank you. Years ago when I joined city council at age 23, not much older than where you are today, 
Uh, we were working with Dr. Falwell on a lot of the things that eventually became uh, this great university. But over the years, I just want to tell you that my family, Kim, who's with me, are so grateful for you, Jonathan, for your entire family. Spiritually, you have been with us all along the way, educated me at LCA. My son received an engineering degree from here, and then my, also my youngest son is now getting a master's degree in biblical studies. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've meant to my family. Thank you for everything that uh, you've meant to Central Virginia. It's been an honor to represent and serve you. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator Newman. It is an honor to have you here. We also have a couple of other special guests I'd like to introduce. First of all, Delegate Wendell Walker is here with us. Would you please give him a warm uh, liberty welcome? And in that spotlight, I'd ask the staff members of Senator Peake and Delegate Byron to please stand. What, what they do doesn't happen alone. So would you please stand so we can acknowledge you? And I have a couple of special guests that uh, are longtime friends of mine, heroes of mine, if you will. And uh, I'd like to introduce the Chancellor of Dallas Baptist University, Dr. Gary Cook. And the President of Dallas Baptist University, Dr. Adam Wright. Thanks so much for being uh, with us today. It's my great privilege to introduce our guest speaker today, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Uh, as uh, most of you know, he's an American patriot. He served 21 years in the U.S. Army. Uh, he deployed uh, uh, in Operation Desert Storm and Desert Shield in 1991 to Kuwait. He deployed to Iraq after the events of 9-11. Uh, and he's, he's been a congressman in Florida. He's been uh, the chairman of the uh, Re Republican Party in the state of Texas. Uh, and he is also uh, uh, currently the, the executive director of the American Constitutional Union. So would you please give a warm liberty welcome to Lute Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Thank you, Joe. Good morning, Liberty University. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning, Liberty University. Yeah. I want to thank you so very much, uh, Major General Costin, President of Liberty University, Chancellor Falwell, and recognizing the honorable members of the Virginia House of Delegates and also the State Senate. It's a pleasure and an honor to be back here on the campus of Liberty University. This is my fourth opportunity. And I got to tell you something, you know, I'm 62, I got a heart pacemaker. I'm going to talk to Dr. Jerry Falwell about why he couldn't find a flat place to put Liberty University, because this morning when I was running up Liberty Road, I was praying to the Lord, don't let me die here on Liberty University. But if I'm going to die, I can't think of a better place to die than Liberty University. You have a great theme, a great motto here at Liberty University, and that's what I want to talk about. You know, is Coach Chadwell here anywhere? I mean, it's college football season. Everybody's worried about the top 10 and where the teams are ranked and everything like that. But I want to talk to you about a different top 10, because when I think about the theme of Liberty University, when I think about that you say that you are training champions for Christ, First and foremost, I want to share with you what it says a champion is. First definition of champion, a person who has defeated or surpassed all rivals in a competition. And if you're not paying attention right now, we're engaged in an incredible competition. It is good versus evil. It is light versus darkness. It is spiritual versus secular. And that's what they're trying to train you up to do here is to be a champion, to go out and win for Jesus Christ. The second definition of what it means to be a champion, a person who fights or argues for a cause or on behalf of someone else. You're being trained to go out there and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. 
You're being trained to go out there and fight for this cause, this thing that we call the Judeo-Christian faith heritage here in the United States of America. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 that the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. That's the title of your university. And let me tell you, that's the challenge that you have to go forth and to make sure that you're champions for true Christian liberty in this great nation. So what I want to talk to you all about are my top 10. The top 10 verses that I think have enabled me since leaving Atlanta, Georgia, going off to the University of Tennessee, going off for 22 years in the United States Army, fighting on different battlefields. But this is what I think has helped me to be a champion for Christ. And if you don't have your top 10, you better have it after today. Because the next time I come back here, I'm going to walk up to a student. I'm going to walk up to a faculty member. I'm going to walk up to somebody and say, tell me one of your top 10 verses to make you a champion for Christ. And see, that's why, you know, the old colonel carries this little thing right here called a little three-by-five cards. Because it says you have to study to show yourselves approved, and that's what you need to be doing. So let's start out with the very first verse. It comes from Joshua, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The very first thing about being a champion for Christ is you got to have a foundation. And what God was telling Joshua here as he took over the incredible multitude after Moses passed away is that this is your foundation. This book of the law, you have to study it. You have to meditate upon it day and night. You must not turn from it from the right or to the left. As long as you do that, you will have success and prosperity wherever you go. But I will tell you also, if you're going to be a champion for Christ, you need to study this other book of the law that I carry with me. It's the Declaration of Independence in the United States Constitution. There is no other nation in the world that was founded on the premise that the individual is sovereign. And the individual is sovereign in the United States of America because you receive your rights, your freedoms, your liberties from a sovereign God. And that's what it says in the Declaration of Independence. So you must have that foundation, that firm understanding of the Word of God and that firm understanding of the rule of law, the Constitution of the United States of America. And when you have that foundation, you're going to be strong. You're going to be courageous. And the Lord God has just said, I'll be with you. I will never fail you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's the power that you have when you have that foundation in being a champion for Christ. Let's go to Proverbs. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, so often many people come up to me, and I just had it when I was flying up here out of DFW. You know, hey, Colonel, what you going to do next? What, 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 what political office are you going to run for? I always refer people to this verse. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your way, your path straight. It's all about trust. If you're going to be a champion for Christ, you got to trust. God has already told you, if you meditate upon this, not turn from it from the right or to the left, you're going to have success and prosperity wherever you go. He already said, be strong and of good courage. If you trust in him, and the old folks down south, I don't know how many people we got here from down south. I'm talking about like Georgia, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. You know what I'm talking about, down south? Well, the old folks down south used to say, let go and let God. Let go and let God. That is what Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is saying. Y'all remember Luke Skywalker in that very first Star Wars movie before they got crazy with all those other Star Wars movies. And remember when Luke Skywalker was told, use the force. 
when he was destroying the Death Star. Get rid of all the instruments. Just trust in the Lord. The force that you have as a champion in Christ is the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you, and you will always, never be let down. That's how you become a champion of Christ. Isaiah 54 and 17. What does it say in Isaiah 54 and 17? No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me. If you're going to be a champion for Christ, you should be emboldened. We got the football team here? Anybody football team, soccer team? Anybody? No. Basketball team? How many athletes we got here? Anybody? Can you imagine if your coach stood up before you, before you went out into the field and said, no team formed against you will prosper, that you already have the victory. That's emboldening you to go out there and take that field. That's what God is telling us here. If you're going to be a champion, know that when you go out on this field, good versus evil, light versus darkness, spiritual versus secular, nothing can stand against you as long as you meditate upon this book of the law. Do not turn from it for the right or to the left. As long as you understand what it means to live in this constitutional republic, as long as you understand the foundation of the Judeo-Christian faith heritage in the United States of America. You know, it's, it's so funny, you know, when, when people come up and they say, hey, you know, Alan West is a sellout. Alan West is an Oreo. Alan West is a white man's porch monkey. That was pretty original. I, I, that was pretty good. Or they come up and say, he's the black face of white supremacy. I'm still working with that. And maybe some of y'all have seen the video when some young lady at Northwestern University came up to me and said, do you identify as black? Yeah. Now, that's Northwestern University. That's supposed to be some smart kid at school. And this... And this knucklehead could not say, oh, okay. do you identify as black? When the last time I checked, I did. <laughs> but see, I identify as a Christian. I identify as a champion for Christ. And I know that on this battlefield of good versus evil, no weapon can stand against me. No words can be brought against me because that's the power that I have because I trust in the Lord. I meditate upon his word day and night. I meditate on the Constitution. I understand. So when the chuckleheads come up to me and they have all these silly arguments and everything, I just smack them down and I love it. <laughs> Jeremiah. 29 and 11 through 13. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, what does it say? For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You know, my mama used to tell me a little simple thing. She said, write your plans in pencil because God's got an eraser. See, I was talking to Brad and Crystal last night, who was so humble to come down and pick me up in Charlotte and bring me back up here because we had some flight issues. And I asked them, what brought you to Liberty University? And neither one of them said that Liberty University was their first choice. But yet here they are. They've graduated and they're still here. So what I want you to understand is that you may have certain things, certain places you want to be, but God knows the plans that he has for you. And if you just trust in him, as it says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, if you understand that you just turn it over to him, that he will give you the strength, he will give you the courage to be able to stand, you can go out there and understand that no matter what comes before you, God has a plan for it. I don't know where I'm going to be five years from now, whatever, but I know where I'm supposed to be right now. And I'm supposed to be right here before you all, inspiring you to understand what it means to be a champion for Christ because we need you on this ideological battlefield to continue on the work that started here some 52 years ago. 
America needs champions for Christ. And you must submit yourself, you must trust to understand that God has the best plan for you. Micah 6 and 8. What does it say in Micah 6 and 8? He has told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. There's something about a Christian character. And I always tell people that you can discern and see someone that is walking with Christ. Because when they walk into a room, there's an aura about them. There's a way about them. That's that Christian character. You know, when I was a commander, and I'm sure the, the general, your president, will also agree, when I was a commander and a young officer would report in to us for the first time, and he'd do, he'd knock on that door, and I'd say, enter. And with every step that officer was taking, to come in to present himself at my desk to render a salute, to report into our unit. I was sizing him up. I was looking at his uniform. I was looking at his haircut. I was looking at his boots. I was trying to figure out what is the composure of this person. And then when that person opened their mouth, I even confirmed or denied my initial assessment. You as a Christian, when you walk out into this world, you are light, you are salt, and people should recognize that. The folks down south used to say, people are gonna know you by the company that you keep. Champions should not hang out with losers. Oh, let me say that again. Champions should not hang out with losers. Light don't hang out with darkness. Good don't want to be a friend with evil. The spiritual should not hang out with the secular. As a matter of fact, in Romans 12 and 2, it says that we are supposed to, as the body of Christ, we are supposed to go out there and not conform to society, not conform to the culture. We're supposed to transform it with what? The renewing of our minds. That means that your mind needs to meditate on this book of the law day and night, should not turn from it from the right or to the left. And as long as you do that, you will have success and you will have prosperity. As long as you do that, you will display that Christian character. Don't get caught up in this thing that the world comes out, the secular world comes out with this social justice. Social justice is just the progressive socialist, secular humanist way of talking about the imposition of equality of outcomes. True justice is found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you must read and understand what that true justice is. But remember what I said. People will know you by the company that you keep. And when you walk into a room as a champion for Christ, you should show that aura. Lou Holtz, when he was the head coach of the University of Notre Dame, he said to his football players when they scored a touchdown, act like you've been there. Christians don't need to be boisterous and loud. I can say it right here, to walk humbly with your God. Show that quiet confidence that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives to you. John 16 and 33. And what does it say in John 16 and 33? These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. Peace that transforms all knowledge. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. A champion for Christ is an overcomer. You may think it's fourth quarter. You're down by a couple of touchdowns. It's 10 seconds left to go in the game. You're down by three points. Calm, peace, because you know that you're a champion. You know that you can pull it out. You know that you can win it. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us. He was an overcomer. He went up to Calvary. He bled and died so that we could be victors, not victims. There's a clear delineation for the two. If you're a champion, you need to understand that I think there was a song that said, I beg your pardon, I didn't promise you a rose garden. Jesus didn't promise us an easy life. As a matter of fact, you can read all throughout the Scripture. He talked about how you would be hated for his name's sake. What he promised and what he told you is that you will have the victory. You will be a champion if you just stand up and honor me, if you seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with me, if you trust 
in me, if you understand that this is your foundation, if you believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn, that's how you overcome the world. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And in Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says, and not only this, but we also exult in tribulations, knowing that tribulation pr brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. We had a saying in the military, warriors move to the sound of the guns. Warriors don't run away from the fight. As a matter of fact, we had this little thing that said, you stand to fight or you run and die tired. I think one of the things that you all need to understand as young people is that adversity will bring about your strength and your courage. Too often we want things to be easy. Too often we don't understand that the trials and tribulations help you to grow stronger. Like this morning, running up Liberty Drive from, what was that, Regents Parkway? Man, I was, I, was hurt. I was hurting. But when I got up to the top at Fairfield Inn, that was about perseverance. That was about increasing and improving my character. And it was hope, because I was certainly praying when I was coming up that last hill. But that's what you do. You know, you don't go to the weight room to lift like two pounds. What's going to happen to you if you do that? You don't go out there and get in the swimming pool and swim forever and think that it's not going to build your muscle. So why is it that we understand that physical exertion, going up against hard things, will make us stronger, but yet when it comes to our spiritual fitness, we want to choose the easy way? Let me tell you something. Find the hard path and take that hard path because it is all about you growing. It's all about you understanding that you're an overcomer. It's all about you understanding, again, that God has the plans for you. Even if he puts a trial or tribulation before it, this is what you should ask the Lord when you come up to an obstacle or you come up to that difficulty. What do you want me to learn from this, O oh Lord? And how can I give you the glory throughout this entire episode? Maybe some of y'all know what happened to me three years ago on a Memorial Day weekend on a Saturday when I was on a motorcycle going 75 miles an hour on Interstate 35, and I was struck on that motorcycle. Now, most people don't survive an accident on a motorcycle at 75 miles per hour going on an interstate highway on a holiday weekend. But here I stand today. And I remember on that following week, when I was asked to be on Fox News for an interview, I said, there but for the grace of God go I, because it was the grace of God that saved me. In all that you do, in all that you go through, look and see how you can honor and give glory to God. That's what a champion does. A champion does not sit around and talk about themselves. A champion sits about and talks about what enabled them to be a champion. But you can't be a champion if you're always looking for the easy road out. Look for the trials and tribulations because it produces the perseverance. The perseverance produces the character, the Christian character that Micah 6 and 8 talks about and the hope. Not hope in man because man's always going to let you down but hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, he can be against it. This is Liberty University, not Northwestern University. If God be for us, so what are you afraid of? You know, Mark Twain once talked about the two most important days in your life. Two most important days of your life. The first day is the day that you're born. The second day is the day you find out why. 
the day that you find out that purpose. And if you're here at Liberty University where the purpose ties into the Great Commission, where their task is to train you to be a champion for Christ, then that's your purpose. Every single day of your life, when you wake up, you are training to be a champion for Christ. And you must understand that God is for you if you accept that mantle. Nothing can be against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not upon your own understanding, and he will guide and direct your path. As long as you meditate on this book of the law day and night, you will have strength. You will have courage. He's with you wherever you go. That's what it means to be a champion, to let go and to let God and to walk in your purpose that he has laid before you. Philippians 4 and 13. Now, everybody here should know Philippians 4 and 13 where it says, very simple, I can do all things. Oh, I can do a couple of things. I can do several things. I can do a few things. I can do maybe some things on Tuesday, maybe later on in the week on Friday. So what are you afraid of? A champion takes the battlefield and knows that he has the victory. A champion takes the battlefield and understands that no weapon forms against me shall prosper. A champion takes the battlefield understanding their foundation and understanding that God has told you to be strong and of good courage. I will not leave you nor forsake you nor wherever you go. A champion understands what Jesus said, that there will be tribulations, but be of good cheer. Be happy about it. I've overcome the world. So you can go out and you can do all things. Even when there's an obstacle, even when there is a trial, a tribulation, you can still do all things because he encourages you by giving you the perseverance, by giving you the character, by giving you the hope that you can continue on with. That's what it means. And the last verse that I've had in my life of trying to be a champion for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes from James. Chapter 1, starting at verse 2. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. There's that thing again about perseverance and endurance. And, the endure, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. That's it. Be a happy warrior. Go out there and look evil in the face and say, I got you. What's that song say? Let the devil know not today. Y'all know that song? See, every single day of your life, you should wake up and tell the devil not today. Every single day of your life, you should wake up and be committed and being a champion for Christ. And when you confront the devil, you grab that sucker by his throat. And you just commence to slapping him, you know, because that's the power you got. You know, kind of like, remember that movie Tombstone when Wild Earp's character was just slapping that guy and say, go ahead, draw that weapon. Just, just slap him some more. That's what you got to do. The devil is a coward. The devil is a liar. But you worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the way, who is the truth, who is the life, who empowers you, all of these things. He is making you a champion. You're here at Liberty University to be a champion. So I want to close with this. First and foremost, like I said, you may not like these 10 verses that have enabled me to be a champion for Christ, but find your own 10. If you don't want to find your own 10, I grant you the permission to take my 10. But let me tell you something. They're already talking about me coming back here in the spring. If I come back here in the spring, and I walk up to you, and I say, 
give me one of your 10 Bible verses to make you a champion for Christ. And you say, uh, <laughs> let me tell you what's going to happen. Colonel going to drop you for push-ups. Okay? Now, I can do that with the guys. Ladies, I got to figure out something to do with y'all. Oh, she just said, I can do push-ups. Okay, go ahead, girl. I mean, yeah. <laughs> she just told me. I wasn't trying to be sexist. I was just trying to not be accused of anything. But... But I will come up to you and ask you. So I'm telling you, Mr. President, Mr. Chancellor, I want to start seeing Liberty University students with three by five cards. I want to see you carrying those 10 verses wherever you go so that you can give an account no matter where you are, no matter who comes up to you. Because remember, like I said, the devil's going to come up and challenge you. And you got to whip out those verses and slap them around. This is the close. Everybody on your feet. On your feet. On your feet. If you are under the sound of my voice, please rise to your feet. And everyone, please raise a holy right hand unto the Lord and repeat after me. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be upon me to protect me from evil, that I may not cause pain, and give me the strength and courage, the wisdom and discernment to defend faith and freedom for your people and my God granted and my God granted and my God granted as I have requested amen 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 go out and be champions for Christ Center of it all, amen. Let's sing together this morning. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all.
Hey, can we thank Lieutenant Colonel Allen West for being with us again today? Don't forget, be back here tonight, 7 o'clock. We'll have campus community in here. Dr. Troy Temple will be opening God's word for us. We'll see you then, 7 o'clock, back in here tonight. Have a great day. You're dismissed.